Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to win every game of Fortnite Zero Builds by going over the decisions I make during my gameplay. So originally, I was going to land at this mini vault over here to the left, but I noticed that there was already two other players who were going to land there, and they had way better drops than I did. So my next idea was I was going to land down that boat, but I noticed there was another player there. But I quickly ended up noticing that there was a little campsite on top of this hill, so I chose to go up here instead. So sometimes when you're playing this game, if you're not going to get a good drop and other players are going to beat you to it, the best thing to do is just to go with plan B and land somewhere else. So now I see footprints coming up on me here. I found this big pot, so I was going to drink that quickly in order to get my health up to have a health advantage. So I thought this guy was going to be hiding behind the bush with a shotgun or something, and no penis didn't even have a weapon at all. So that was an easy kill for me to pick up. That's also why you want to make sure you are going to land first and get a weapon so that does not happen to you. Next, I'm going to way down to this beach area here where these boats are in order to try to get a little bit better loot. And I ended up finding another big pot, which again, I use right away because you always want to try to stay as healthy as possible, especially in solos. I then opted to go grab the Crash Pad Juniors because at least it's mobility and it's better than not having any mobility at all. Then I went back up the hill and ran towards the initial spot I was going to land that I knew there would probably be some players there to fight. Ran into this player here in the Christmas skin and quickly took them out with my Striker AR. Now, the scope that came on this thing is definitely not very good for this weapon, in my opinion. It is a good scope, but it's not for the Striker, and it's more suited for longer ranges. Then I went inside the building here, and there's only one guard I have to take out in order to get the key card to get into that mini vault. I quickly and easily took out that guard, then I noticed some footsteps on my screen and could hear that I had another player coming up to try to third party me. I reloaded my weapons and just waited for the door to open and then I just fried them with the striker AR. It's very important that you're always aware of your surroundings and be aware of other players who might be coming in to try to third party and take you out after you've just finished having a fight. I then looted up whatever was left inside this building here and I did opt to grab the Frenzy Auto Shotgun that is just much better in zero builds. And I then grabbed the key card and now it's time to make our way over to the vault. After using the key card to open the door, I don't waste any time and quickly continue to just loot up any floor loot or ammo crates that are still lying around. I do this because I always want to try to keep ahead of the storm as much as possible and staying in an area, especially after you've had a couple fights, you're just asking for other people to show up and try to third party you. So now when I get down to the vault here, I do see that there's a purple sniper, but I'm not a fan of the scope on it, so I'm actually just going to keep the blue sniper that I have here. And I also found a grapple blade, which is a very good item. So I end up taking it instead of the Crash Pad Junior. Because the Ground Blade has limited uses and it recharges over time. It's also a very good item to use for repositioning as well as to get around the map. I also end up opening up a chest and found a Purple Striker AR with a red dot sight on it, which is a way better sight for this weapon as this AR is better suited for close to medium range fights. I ended up heading towards some shooting I heard off in the distance and then came across this guy driving around in a car. So I decided to pop a couple shots off at it, hoping that he'd get out of the car so I could maybe get a sniper shot on him, but unfortunately, he didn't get out of the car. So I ended up using my grapple blade to position on top of this little mountain area here and a back at where this mini vault was in order to try to push this player. So after I hopped over the fence here, I ended up seeing a player just running around over here. I take some shots out so that I noticed some more footprints, so I hopped over this fence, but I didn't juke backwards, throw my opponent off, and get into a 50-50. And I ended up getting fried really good here, but I won that fight. And my immediate response now is to quickly put some distance between me and where I just had that fight, because I know there was another player running around there. As much as I really wanted to go check the loot of the opponent I just took out, and maybe search for some heals, I don't know where that player is exactly, and I cannot take another close-range fight right now. So that's why I went over to these trees here, because I'm trying to just have a look, see what's going on, maybe get lucky, take a sniper shot off them or something like that. Now I see them leaving on a motorbike here, so instead of just hiding, I do actually opt in to actually shoot at them. So I take a sniper shot, I miss it, I fire some bullets in my AR, they're still driving away, so I still decide to keep shooting sniper bullets at them to apply some pressure. And I do this because that player doesn't have any idea how much health I actually have, so if I act aggressive, that player is more likely not to turn around and come back at me. Allowing me the time in order to drink these minis to get my shields back up, and also use this med kit that I found here. I also made sure I went inside this building here to use this med kit so that I would be in cover. As snipers are so popular this season and you don't want to be just healing with a med kit which takes 10 seconds out of the open. 
Now this door was closed to get out be fast, so I choose to take this car here in order to rotate much quicker. Also, because their snipers are so popular and everyone has one, you don't really want to be running around in the open and cars are great mobile cover. Also notice how I parked the car to the side of the road so it kind of looks like it belongs there. Now I also did decide to go for a cache drop this game, even though I usually do just avoid these because they're not generally worth it. But in this case, I did need to acquire some more shield. I only had a gray friendly auto shotgun and these drops always drop blue rarity weapons. Also, this should be obvious, but you definitely don't want to be standing out in the open right beside a cache waiting for it to open up. Always get the cover like a bush as you see I just did there so that you're not going to be getting third party sniped by somebody else from across the map. So now while I was hiding that bush, a player that ran away on the bike earlier, I ended up seeing them running, so I ended up taking them out with a couple sniper shots and now I got a gold sniper and a crown. So I head back up to my cache to check out to see what exactly I got from it. And lo and behold, what did I get? Got a blue frenzy auto shotgun, and I got a big pot, which I need to replenish my shield. And again, I went back to the bush to use it for cover instead of drinking my big pot out in the open. After I finished healing, it was back to the car for safety and to travel around the bat more quickly. I ended up heading up towards the graveyard up here because I knew that there was an NPC here that I could sometimes hire. Now, hiring an NPC when you're playing Fortnite, especially as a solo, is a very useful thing for you to do. As not only do they come with their own unique abilities, they can also give you items, they'll also fight enemies with you, and they're also another target for your opponents to shoot at. Now I ended up running into this building here, even though I only needed like three more shield, because when you're solo, so you only have one life, no one's bringing you back, and that can be the difference between finishing a fight and having two, two HP and being a winner or being a loser, and getting sent back to the lobby. So now I end up starting to rotate with my grapple blade, and now you're going to notice here how I can move around the map very quickly, but I always make sure to always save a couple charges in the grapple blade. I never run it to zero unless I have to, because if I get into a sticky situation, I want to make sure that I'm still able to get away. Next, I decided to go and capture the island point, as it's always a great idea to do so whenever you're playing a game. Because when you capture the flag, not only does it mark the enemies that are in the near vicinity, but it also can give you some pretty good loot as well. It also makes for a very excellent vantage point to be able to snipe people trying to run out of the storm or just to try to spot players to find out where everyone else is on the map. And if that's not a good enough reason to come up here, there's also launch pads to help you rotate as well as a mod bench in the basement so you can upgrade your weapons. As you can see here by capturing the flag, it ended up dropping me an upgrade to the striker AR which I already had. So now I have a legendary one instead of an epic one. As well, the flag also is going to drop you healing items, which can be very useful for endgame. After upgrading all my weapons to my liking, I ended up coming back up and just hanging out up here on the island for a bit. I ended up picking up a really easy elimination with my sniper rifle. I didn't really have to rush or worry about anything as there is the jump pads, so I can easily just get to zone. If an enemy chooses to take a rift or use one of the zip lines to get up here, I'm also going to know about it. And I can easily take them out if they take the zip line to get up here. So definitely never take a zip line to come up the island because you're just an easy target. The door was closing in quickly now, so it was time to use the jump pad and make our way farther into the zone. Now I was looking at that blue car I was driving early down there. I was thinking of landing there to take that car to rotate better and have some protection. But then I noticed on the map, look at the top right corner, a really small round circle. That means that there's a player there who has a lot of the medallions. This guy actually has all five. So as soon as I see that, I say, you know what, I need to go get this guy out of the lobby right now because he's probably one of the better players in the lobby. But now this guy was also very foolish because he had a G-Wagon right there and wasn't sitting in it. So I just easily took him out with a shotgun and then I ended up putting all five medallions for myself. Now as soon as I picked these up, I immediately just started driving away because I now know everyone knows where my location is. And I switched seats here because I thought that I might have picked up some healing packs when I was on the island, but I didn't. So then I opted back to come back here to check out his loot and he ended up having Oscar's Mythic Shotgun which is the best shotgun in the game which is very overpowered but it does have a slow reload. Now I was thinking of dropping these medallions here but then I realized there's only 8 players left so I said you know what actually now I'm just going to keep these and if you have all 5 medallions especially in zero build especially you're going to want to have a car or be inside a house or just have some kind of cover because everyone's going to know where you are and you're going to get sniped and you're going to get pushed by everybody in the lobby so you definitely want to make sure that you have protection and you have cover but as you see there guys are starting trying to shoot me 
So I ended up using the car, pulled up on him, jumped out, used him to cover, blasted him, got the med kits, healed. Then another guy came to try a third party me, so I just took him out quickly with my AR. And now I see more shooting off in the distance this way. So I continue on my journey here, I hop out, keeping my distance, trying to take some sniper shots at these players running across the river here. I do end up moving up a little bit closer to them, and I can't really see through the hill. And I also am trying to stay near the hill so I can use it to keep myself less exposed to all the enemy players around here. And I kind of use that as a head glitch while I'm trying to shoot players. Now you might be wondering why I went so close to that Laura Croft skin there. Because I've seen her when she was crossing the river, and just the way that she was fighting and moving, I knew she was a bot, so I wasn't too concerned with that player at all. So I opted to go for one of the other players that might actually be a real player. So now when I went to shoot her here, I noticed somebody had already shot her and stole a kill. This guy up on the hill, so I zoomed with my sniper, and that is GG's. And that is a win with 12 kills and all 5 medallions. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, that it helps you get a crown dub in Fortnite. If it did, please consider subscribing if you'd like to see some more videos like this in the future. Or at least smash that like button, so I know I'm doing a good job here. Or even comment down below to let me know what you think, or if you have any video ideas for me that you might like to see me do in the future. I'm Big Papa Spurf, 187, signing off here. Have fun gaming. Bye.